Welcome back everybody to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Yeah guys, today we are doing just a little bit of blood magic here. I am using our dagger of sacrifice that is being infused by our incense altar that we set up last episode. And I did set up a little automation here, so we are taking our imbued inscription tiles, putting one at a time into the blood altar, and then extracting that over into this chest. So our extraction, um, or we have a filter here on the insert side of our extraction, and we are just filtering when we get to a blank slate. We can't just pull out whatever that goes into the blood altar. Otherwise, uh, a partially infused inscription tile will be pulled out, and then, yeah, we'll just waste all the blood or whatever, the life essence, I guess is what it's called. On the ins or the extraction side, or I guess the insert side of the blood altar, uh, we have a limited item filter here that is filtered for the imbued inscription tile, so we are only putting one in at a time. If you pipe in items, you can put in up to 64 items into here. Not really a great idea, especially when you don't have unlimited life essence to throw at it. Yeah. Um, so I am using our carrots to give us the saturation, which refills our hunger or our health, I guess. Uh, and then I'm waiting on the soul free effect, which takes 20 seconds to dissipate. That is enough time for us to keep this thing completely full though. As long as we remember to not right click until the soul free has worn off. You can see that on the right hand side of the screen above the night vision right over here, this little sword icon thing. So whenever that goes away, we can do another right click and give it the entire, um, benefit of the I guess that would be the incense altar or the sacrificial dagger, but we haven't really done anything with the incense altar down here. Uh, like I said last episode, we can put in different path blocks and increase the amount of life essence that we get by right clicking this. It's not really so much an issue right now. We're keeping up just fine, but eventually we'll be able to put in orbs of dislocation and stuff and increase the amount of life essence that we can store in the blood altar here. And yeah, we're definitely gonna wanna give it more and more at a time. Uh, but for right now, I think we're gonna go ahead and call that good. That's a stack plus one of these blank slates, and that should allow us to continue on. We're trying to do the common Tartaric gem. That required an imbued slate, and the imbued requires a tier three altar. In order for us to get to that tier three, we have to also make a tier two altar, and that requires us to put at least blank runes around our altar in these eight spots and then the tier three requires the additional 20 spots here being filled <laughs> so that's a lot of slates and stuff for us to do so if we go to blood and we look at um what are these things called rune yeah we have a bunch of different options here so blank rune is the default one uh, that doesn't have any additional effect other than it will help increase the level of your blood altar. A speed rune takes a blank rune plus additional slates. It increases the altar level as well, and it will also make it so that your blood altar does things that much faster. Uh, efficiency rune, I think uses less life essence for the recipes. Rune of sacrifice when you kill monsters nearby your altar, I believe their life essence goes into the the pool here. Self-sacrifice, this is the one we're gonna be wanting to use a lot in conjunction with the incense altar, because that will help boost the amount of life essence we put into the altar. Uh, displacement rune, runic capacity, all these other ones we'll probably take a look at a little bit later. Runic capacity and augmented capacity, these are the runes that you need in order to increase the amount of storage space that your altar can have. Um, so like the very first one here requires an imbued, which is a tier three. So we can't quite do that yet until we get to that tier three, but it seems like every single one of these does use a blank rune as a recipe. So we can feel free to make as many of these blank runes as we want. So each blank rune requires blank slates. So that is two per rune and we needed, what is that 28? So 40, 56. We need 56 uh, blank slates in order to make all the runes. So let's go ahead and grab those. 56 of those, all right. Now we should be able, as long as we have the steel, to put all the runes in to get us to a tier three. 
Uh, so if we do this, how are we doing on the steel situation? We should be okay. We should be okay. So let's do that and that. There's 28 blank runes. All right, so let's increase our blood altar level. All right, we'll just go ahead and get rid of these blocks here. And throw these guys in place. Make sure I got an escape path. <laughs> Let me out. And there we go. All right, so the altar should be a tier two, and we can verify that by using your divination sigil on it just by right-clicking on the altar. Or I guess if you hold it in your hand, it says on the tooltip at the top, current tier two. Okay, so we want to get rid of these as well. I'll just vein mine that level away. And then we can replace all these blocks once again with these blank runes, and that should get us up to a tier three. Now, the higher the tier the blood altar is, the faster some recipes go. They use life essence that much faster, and if you can't keep up, like, if the altar is out of life essence, it kind of starts undoing the craft, the percent done. Yeah, so you'll start wasting time and not being able to complete anything. So there we are. We're now at a tier three blood altar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we are here, we should be able to do an imbued slate that requires 5,000 LP. The blank slate to the reinforced requires 2,000. And then the first one requires 1,000. So to go from the inscription tile all the way to the reinforced slate, that looks like that's going to cost you 8,000 LP. So you need to make sure you have at least 8,000 in there if you're going from the imbued inscription tile all the way up. All right, so we can just go ahead and use one of these. Uh, I will use this guy. Very good. And we can just put these in manually. Now, another thing that we can do, since we want to extract the tier three, we can search for slates. And Ender IO will allow you to click one of these if you're on one of these filters and you get this little arrow and you can pop it right there. So now it knows that an imbued slate is what we want to remove and we don't want to remove the blank slate because that's what we're currently infusing, right? So we put the blank slate in there, it'll go through, turn it into the tier two, and then once it turns into the tier three, we will extract it out. I'm noticing that this is going slower <laughs> than when we did the imbued inscription tile. Those were taking 1000 life essence really fast. This is going a little slower, it looks like. All right, so there we go. And then it's gotta use 5,000 more and then we get to the tier three. All right, so I used up the rest of the life essence that we needed. I'll go ahead and just do then kind of fill up a bit more. So here is our imbued slate. And that is what we need here for our common tartaric gem. In fact, we actually need another one, don't we? Because the way this works is each time you increase your tier of the tartaric gem, it requires more minimum will. So basically, you have to make two of these, fill one of them up, and then use that as your next tier so you can upgrade one and use one to provide the will. Does that make sense? Anyway, you generally have to make two at a time of these things. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have a second one cooking up here. So we have enough for one more of these blank slates to turn into the imbued. So I'll pop one in there and we'll let it do its thing. Uh, oh, I don't have my regeneration going. Okay, so now that we have that, we should be able to come over here and pop this guy right into here. And we are not doing anything because this doesn't have enough will, maybe? Let me take a look. This requires a minimum of 240 and we have 236. Yep, so that makes sense. I need to go fill this up just a little more. Okay, so our Tartaric gem is now at 256 will. We popped that in here. And yes, we can in fact create the next level, which is awesome. So now we have a common Tartaric gem and we want to upgrade our lesser one here. Now, here's a trick if you don't know. If you have another gem in your inventory and you have one of these that is full of will, you can do a right click on this one and that will transfer all of the will into the other one that's in your inventory. Mm hmm. So now we can take this lesser one, pop it in here with all the rest of the items that we need and make yet another one of these common tartaric gems. So I'm going to go fill this one up. I'm going to do this recipe, fill it all the way up again, and we'll continue on, guys. All right, so now that we have our common tartaric gems, both of those are ready to go. We can upgrade this to the next level, and this one's completely full. To make the next level the greater one, 
Uh, we need to have a minimum of 1,000 will, which we have. It holds 1,024, so we're good to go there. But this also requires a demonic slate, which is tier 4, which we can't do just yet. Also requires demon will crystals and weak blood shards. So these are all next step things that we need to do. And I believe the tier 4 altar also requires this weak blood shard in order to make the large bloodstone tiles, which I represented over here with redstone blocks. So we have to do the weak blood shards in order to get to the next tier anyway. I feel like this is a good point to just go ahead and start doing the path blocks and making the tranquil area down below. Um, so the very first step we have to do is a wooden path blocks and those require different blood orbs here. Uh, and I believe the the one that we have to use is an apprentice blood orb. I do not think the weak blood orb works here. So we can see apprentice there, but if we kind of watch all of these different orbs cycle through, yeah, we never get to the weak one. So we have to make the apprentice. So that requires us to put a redstone block into the blood altar in order to do that. So we'll go ahead and make the tier two one, a uh, redstone block. And then the uh, next one after that is a magician blood orb. And that requires 25,000 LP. The apprentice one requires 5,000. And if you remember, our altar only holds 10,000. So that means we have to fill it up one and a half times while this process is going. Not exactly the easiest thing to do. Generally speaking, it's best to increase the amount of uh, life essence your altar can hold, get up to 25,000, and then do this particular one. Again, if you only have 10,000 and this is using the life essence faster and you can put it in, like the percentage done bar starts going backwards as it's trying to complete and there's nothing, no uh, life essence to process, right? Anyway, uh, so we want to do the apprentice blood orb. That's 5,000 LP. So let's go ahead and throw that into here. Make sure we got that in our altar. First of all, we do not. And we'll do a right click of this. Okay. So I did just spend a little bit of time uh, leveling up astral sorcery, trying to get the one thing uh, that as you regain health, it removes negative status effects. Does not look like that worked on the soul fray. And it is possible <laughs> that soul fray was removed from that ability. Um, but anyway, here we go. We are up to almost 10,000. So that's more than enough to put this guy in here. So we'll do that and let that uh, form into the next blood orb. Yeah, it doesn't look like that soul fray is going away. I remember doing this in Enigmatica 2 Expert. And I think that might have been using an older version of blood magic or astral sorcery or whatever. And astral, or uh, yeah, as I would do similar here, uh, use the sacrificial dagger and my health would go up. That status effect would go away quite frequently, but yeah, two in a row did not go away. So it might have been removed. Might not be a thing that we can do in this particular pack. I don't know. Anyway. This should be about done and we should be able to get our orb so we can make the path blocks and start working on our tranquility for the incense altar. Oh yeah, that just went away, didn't it? I don't think that was a full 20 seconds that time. Okay, well, anyway, uh, so apprentice blood orb and then to make these wooden path blocks, we need planks plus this. And we can also do the stone, I believe that is still the same level. I think you can do it with the Apprentice, or maybe you do need the next tier. Oh, it looks like you do need the next tier. That's gonna be the Magician Blood Orb, right? Magician, yeah, Magician. Okay, so we can only do the wooden ones first. All right, so let's get these made. I believe, I believe you go out three blocks. It says in the Blood Magic book, and I don't think we have a Blood Magic book. Oh no, this is the Blood Magic book. I thought this was the thing that showed um, the altar schematic or whatever. So if we look in here, we should be able to find what we're looking for. And I think it might be under the architect. Anyway, let me go ahead and find it real quick. All right, guys. So if you look at the, the book, you go to the architect section, you have the incense altar. It tells you all about it and that you get a 20% bonus just for doing what we were doing. Uh, and then you can increase that bonus. Now I was talking about 
Uh, if you place a row of three wooden path blocks two blocks away from the incense altar in each of the cardinal directions, making sure that all path blocks are on the same Y level, up to five blocks up or down from the incense altar, you can define an area. Uh, anyway, it sounds confusing. Like, that's one of those things I'll read and it's like, what does that say? And I'll read it again. It's like, I still don't know. And then I have to look at a picture. So essentially what that's saying is you have your incense altar and you have a three by three area around it, right? So it's sitting on a three by three outside of that three by three, extending the cardinal directions is where you place your path blocks. So the path blocks, these wooden ones can be uh, three by three and they have to be on all four sides. And if you do everything correctly and you look at your incense altar while holding your divination sigil, you can see up here that we have a 20 per, or it says tw plus 20 and then the altar says plus zero. Um, so the way you tell if you've done this correctly is by placing something that's tranquil around. So like these areas over here that aren't the path blocks, if we place a piece of grass here and we come over and right click on the altar, just do it a few times. There you go. You can see now we get a plus 24 and it says plus 70 tranquility. Yep. So if we can place a bunch of grass and that will increase the amount of stuff that we get, each time you add the same thing, it like increases a little bit less. So you want to use unique items. You can also place stuff on the wood path. So pretty much this entire nine by nine minus the uh, three by three in the center, the entire nine by nine area, you can place different things. So you want to place like wood leaves. Uh, you can use life essence that you can get from the blood altar itself, flowing water. Like there is so many different options here. Let's, uh, let's actually do maybe like the water one. So I will just kind of block off the center thing since we don't want anything going in there. And then we want to block off uh, stuff from leaving this area. So something like this. And then also having the source block of water is fine, but also having flowing water is better. So I guess it adds to it. So if we do this, we have the source block plus a bunch of flowing spots. So we get a lot of stuff for that. So if we look at this now, you can see we're at 572 plus 58. So that water alone adds a whole bunch. So we can do the same thing, but with lava, and then we can do the same thing with life essence, and you can get quite a bit of boost just from the little bit of liquid that you'd be doing there. I think we have lava around here somewhere, maybe right here. Oh boy, I don't know where my lava is. I know we got some around here. There it is, okay. So yeah, we'll place lava on this other one. And then if we extract the life essence from the altar, we can add even more. So we'll do that. If we look at this, we're at plus 60. So at certain levels, you can only get up so high and it might be, we can only get plus 60 with the wood path blocks. It might be the case. Yeah. You can see we're up to 967 tranquility, but only plus 60. I think we've maxed this out, but we'll go ahead and add the, uh, the life essence one here, just so we have that as well. So simply by having your blood alter with uh, translocators or some kind of way to pump liquids out, you can just pump them out. It doesn't go very quickly, but it goes quick enough. So we can get ourselves a bucket and then I will attempt to put that back into the altar. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now we're good to go here. We can just turn this off completely. So we have the life essence bucket. So now we can place that one right here and our tranquility is going up to 1121. So that's not bad at all. But again, we're maxed out. We're only getting the plus 60 bonus. Uh, it won't be until we extend out with the stone and then the other path blocks, uh, the worn stone, and you got the obsidian. Yeah, it won't be until we can do all those other ones that we get a higher bonus. But you can see it's pretty easy to max out our tranquil area. Anyway. So now that that's all done, we should be able to come up here and look at the altar. And uh, every time we use our sacrificial dagger, it should fill it up pretty much completely every single time. We're going to be looking pretty good right now. So the next step is we wanted to increase to a tier four. So we need to get ourselves the blood shards. So let's do that. The weak blood shards. So we need to get ourselves a new type of sword. And um, or is it a dagger? I think it's a dagger of sacrifice. Is that correct? Um, can we look at weak blood shards? Actually, maybe it's not the dagger of sacrifice. Maybe we have to get the bound blade. 
been a minute since I've done this. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think this is it, the bound blade. So to do a bound blade, we need binding agent, reagent, plus a diamond sword using the arcane ashes. The binding reagent requires 400 will. Yeah, 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 we can do this. Let's go do that real quick. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay. So over here, the dagger out of my hand here. Uh, so we need the binding reagent. So that is redstone, glowstone, gunpowder, and gold. Redstone, glowstone, gunpowder, and a gold nugget. All right, so that's everything we need. We'll place that here, shift click those all in, and that's gonna use a little bit of our tartaric gem, but that's fine, that's why we made that. We need the arcane ashes that we have here, and then we need a uh, diamond sword, which I think you can just craft. I don't think there's anything special about that. Yeah, okay, so now we have this. So if we do the arcane ashes, uh, let's look at this real quick. So we have to put the binding reagent down first, and then we put the sword in. It kind of matters the order you put these in, so we do the binding reagent, which changes the, the rune here. And then we do that, and it does its little thing here, and then we should get the bound blade here in just a moment once all of this is done. All right, it's going, 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 and... Boop, all right, bound blade, awesome. So when you use the bound blade, it does pull life essence from your blood network. Uh, in order to add life essence to your blood network, you need to take an, a, one of your blood orbs that you've made, you need to right click it so it binds it to you. So you can see this now says current owner me. And if I put it into our blood altar, it's gonna start using the life essence in the blood altar and putting it into our blood network. You can see how much is in there by taking your divination sigil and right clicking into the air. And we're up to 13, 1400, it's not going very fast. Um, but yeah, that's how that's done. So we've used 2000 life essence from the altar and it'll just keep going and going until we're done. Uh, so it's essentially the same kind of a deal. You wanna hold this in your offhand, put your bow, or I'm sorry, put this in your main hand, put your bow into your offhand and go kill some monsters. Yep, pretty much the same exact deal with this. I, I actually don't know if this has to be activated. If you shift right click the sword, yeah, you can see, it's uh, now looks like a sword. If you shift right click it, then it will work like a sword. I'm actually not sure if you need it activated in order to work. Anyway, when it's activated, that's when it's using LP from your network. So you might even be able to get away without activating it. Let's try killing some things and see if we get the blood shard without. I'm not seeing any blood shards yet. Yeah, it might need to be activated. So let's shift right click it, we'll activate it, then we'll kill the spider. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it absolutely does have to be activated. I wasn't quite sure, but yep, turns out it does. And I think looting affects it too. You might be able to get more blood shards if you uh, in enchant the sword. So that might be something worth doing. Depends on how many of these we need, but this is how we get them. So if you wanna farm them, this is it. So to make the large bloodstone tiles, we need to have a um, dawnstone block. We didn't quite have enough, so I had to make some more dawnstone. Now I tried setting up the centrifuge mixer and the melters and this and that like we had before. We ripped this down a while ago when we upgraded to the new base, right? And I couldn't get it to work for nothing. I tried putting the melted materials on the top of the mixer and the bottom of the mixer and breaking, replacing all the things. And I spent about 30 minutes on it. And this works just fine. You can melt down copper and gold in a smeltery, extract out using a fluid extractor, pipe right into the stamp base uh, and have it stamp into the ingots. <laughs> is this the best way to do it? I don't know, but this is way better than like wasting all that time that I wasted trying to get this to work using the embers only method. Yep, well anyway, uh, this is a temporary setup. We're gonna be removing this as soon as we're done uh, stamping out all the dawn stone that we need to stamp out. But I thought I'd bring this to your guys' attention in case you want to do something similar because this is so much easier and so much better than the other ways 
of making the Dawnstone with embers. All right, guys, so the Ritual Inker, the Horologium Ritual, the Tick Acceleration from Astral Sorcery absolutely works with the Blood Altar. So I just got done making a uh, few of these imbued slates here. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is I want to do some augmented capacity. So we are at a level four altar right now. I put in the 28 more of these blink runes. But yeah, I want to increase the capacity for our blood altar so we can do the tier three blood orb. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these blocks here. So this is gonna go back down to a tier one since we don't have the tier two blocks in place. And all of these we're going to increase in capacity. So as we saw, that requires the imbued slates and it also requires some buckets. Um, and then the runic capacity can be upgraded to the rune of augmented capacity later on, right? I think this does like a percentage. This does a straight increase. I think it's something like if you have more than 14 of the runic capacities, it's better to use the rune of augmented capacity or it's something like that. Anyway, uh, for right now, we're just going to do the eight of these and call that good. So we've seen before that the blood altar can only hold 10 buckets of life essence, right? So each one of these, I think, adds a bucket. I can't remember. Yeah, okay. So just putting those in there brings us up to 28 buckets. So that's really good. So at this point, we should be able to use our sacrificial dagger and like really up the amount of life essence in here. We're up to 14 buckets in there. Our soul phrase gone away. As soon as our health regens, we can click this thing again and put another boost into this. And I think we need to, I think it was a gold block, was it? For the uh, the orb, the next one. Let's take a look. The next tier, weak apprentice, it was a magician. Yeah, gold block. So we should be good. Uh, waiting on that soul fray at this point. Then we should be capped out and we should be able to do our next orb. So Frey has gone away and we are full except for the life essence that have gone into like the internal tank. That's fine. We will be able to get that here in a second. So let's grab a gold block and we'll come back over here. Give it another right click. Everything's good. We're full block in here. This should go very, very quickly because of the tick acceleration. It goes a lot faster than if you didn't have that anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah. We should now be able to get the next orb, which will allow us to do more of the path blocks and get our tranquility area bigger and give us a bigger boost every time we use the dagger, which is going to be great. So there's our magician blood orb. We'll go and bind that to ourselves as well. And that also allows us to get bigger amounts of life essence in our LP network. Currently we're at 2,500 with uh, the magician blood orb. I don't remember what that brings us up us up to like a hundred thousand maybe five hundred thousand something like that uh but yeah we can put a lot more in there so now if we go back to the path blocks and we do this the stone path so that's just regular stone with this and i'll have to take a look it's either two blocks further or three blocks further that you can do it with the stone and then we can add a little bit more tranquility all right guys so adding in the stone path bricks it's a stone brick path i guess two blocks out is enough room i think that's all you can do with these particular ones and you have the worn stone bricks and those go on an additional two and then you have the obsidian ones later but uh with us just moving this life life essence out a little bit the water the lava and our grass like all we do is just move them to the corners that doesn't actually do anything but just give us a little bit more room uh, with us doing that and just adding in this nether rack here, we are now at 120. You can see we have 1460 tranquility. And if we increase that, you can do that by adding fire. So we're 1460. If we add a little bit of fire here, that brings us up to 1600, but our 120 doesn't change at all. So adding fire does add to the tranquility and adds a bunch of sound and stuff. But we can't really do anything with that right now, so there's not a lot of reason to have it there, and it's just more noise pollution. If we could get rid of the lava and the fire and all this kind of stuff, that would probably uh, be better. Uh, might look at getting a sound muffler or something to get rid of the sound for that, but uh, the important takeaway right now is that we can get up to 120 with our dagger, 
and that's going to produce a whole lot more LP that we can put into the altar, the blood altar, all at once. So at this point, we are pretty much maxed out on the incense altar. Uh, so yeah, anything that we want to do going forward, we should be okay with. Uh, getting more of these runes of capacity is probably good. The fact that we can tick accelerate the blood altar uh, probably don't need the speed runes as much. Unless we just want the altar to go that much faster all the time. So that'll be something to consider later on. But I think for right now, I think we are pretty much good to go on the whole blood magic situation. Uh-huh. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.